Hello and welcome back. Uh, I am D. Uh, this is Board Crazy, and today I am reviewing Disney's Hocus Pocus: The Game with with Will. Yes. So we decided that I am the counterpart of Mary, right? And then you're Winifred. Yes. Yeah, we're here to review Hocus Pocus, like D said. Yep. Uh, but as we always do before we start talking about the game and giving our thoughts on it, uh, we're going to run my introduction to the game from our uh, playthrough, which is also on the channel. If you, yep. have, if you haven't watched that yet, you can go watch that, or you can just get a little uh, brief rundown right now. Here that goes. <laughs> Hocus Pocus, based on the 1993 motion picture, is a game for two to six players, designed by the Prospero Hall Group and published by Ravensburger. In this game, players must work together to play specific combinations of ingredients in order to sabotage the witch's potion so that it remains unfinished when the sun rises, but they're not going to make it easy. To set up, the sun token is placed on the lowest spot of the sunrise track on the witch board, and the spell cards get shuffled up into a face-down pile. Uh, the ingredient cards also get shuffled up, and each player is dealt either three or four, depending on the player count, and these ingredient cards must be kept secret from all other players. The game is played in rounds, during which players take turns in clockwise order. Each turn is comprised of three steps, starting with the asking of a question. Players may ask all other players if they have a specific type of ingredient or a specific color of ingredient, but not both. Once the question has been answered, the player must then play a card from their hand onto one of the five piles in the cauldron. The card being played must match either the type or color of the top ingredient in that pile. Once this is done, the player then simply draws a new card. Certain ingredient cards feature one of two symbols, making them special ingredients. One of these symbols is Binks the Cat, and when a card with Binks is added to the cauldron, the player who played it may choose any player to get the Binks token, allowing them to play with their cards face up on the table. The other symbol, however, is the Spellbook. When a Spellbook card is played, and also when every player is unable to legally add a card to the cauldron, the Sanderson sisters cast a spell to hinder the players. Fortunately, the players have some tools at their disposal as well. There are four trick tokens, each of which has a unique special power and can be used once per game. Also, if the players combine their ingredients correctly, they will stun one of the witches, rendering them incapable of casting spells during the next round and also advancing them one step towards victory. Whenever all top five cards in the cauldron are the same color, the same type, or the same type in five different colors, then a corresponding witch gets stunned and the sun token moves up one space, ending the round. And if the players manage to move the sun to the top space, then it is sunrise and they have won the game. But there is a catch. Each time a round ends, all non-special ingredients used during the round are permanently removed from the game, and all special ingredients are shuffled back into the deck, meaning that the odds of a spell being cast increase as sunrise approaches. And if a player ever has to draw an ingredient card and the deck is empty, then the witches have completed their potion and the players lose. All right, Will. So, Hocus Pocus, the game, yeah, based on the movie. Uh, this is, I guess, I guess we should start by setting expectations somewhat for the people who haven't, uh, watched us play it and are, you know, coming in somewhat, uh, ignorant on the game itself. This is a Robinsberger licensed game. This is yeah. designed by the people at Prospero Hall. Um, so this is like the same group that did Jaws and Horrified and another Disney game in Villainous. Yeah. Uh, I would say unlike those games, especially like Jaws and Horrified, this is not, this is a much lighter experience. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, it's less super like thematically heavy uh, than those games are. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely more of a filler game. Uh, so it's something to keep in mind coming in. Yeah, I think that's fair. There's not as much to draw from. So it's a bit of a, a lighter, lighter sort of thing here. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, this game is not reinventing the wheel at all. Uh, no. I think it's fair to say. I don't know if there's anything particularly unique here. Um, it's, you know, it's a game where you, there's, you know, hidden information, but it's cooperative, so players are asking questions to sort of uh, figure stuff out. Mm -hmm. um, it's very much, personally, it reminded me very much of, like, Hanabi with a bit of Uno thrown in there, uh, where you're con you have to, like, match things on the stacks, either the color or the ingredient mm -hmm. type to sort of keep progressing. Uh, so that's kind of what you're you're looking at. It also reminded me a bit of um, 
the Fox in the Forest duet. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was a similar kind of card game that we played recently where you kind of have to go off... You have to kind of infer what your teammate wants to do and then play. And then that's also a card game, so... Yeah, yeah. There's We've played some similar games. There's definitely like, there's an, an intuition element. Maybe yeah. even the mind it reminds me of a little bit of times, too. You just kind of hope you're on the same wavelength mm-hmm. as the person you're playing with. If I'm being frank, this is probably not a game I would have given much attention to were it not for who made it and, you know, the, the, the theme, theme and everything. But for what it is, I still think it's actually pretty fun. I have a good time when I'm playing it, even though there's nothing... Like, super uh, incredible here from a design perspective. I, I think, it's, yeah. I think it's, it's just enjoyable to play. It's just a nice, breezy game. Like you said, it's a filler game. And I like these kind of games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the cooperative element also takes a little bit of pressure yeah. off everybody. So it's just kind of, it is just one of those easygoing, have fun kind of games. It does help to know the movie. I though. think people who enjoy this game the most are, are the fans of the movie. Yeah. You don't have to know or be, you know, be familiar all that well with with uh, hocus pocus uh but it, i think it does help it does you know enriches the experience somewhat mm-hmm. um but yeah as far as like actually playing it though i, I you know there, there's always something very satisfying when a, a sort of an unspoken plan comes together there, there there is obviously there's a lot of luck here yeah but you know there is there is strategy there is thinking you do have to sort of uh you know consider like when, when which question to ask yeah, uh, uh, when it's our turn, you know, you can only get either a cult if the other players have a specific color in their hand or a specific ingredient in their hand. And, you know, choosing, you know, based on what's in the, in the cauldron already, what you have in your hand, you know, choosing then what to ask to, and, and to sort of uh, figure out how to go forth from there. Uh, it's a simple way, we've discussed with other games that have similar mechanics, mm-hmm. it's a simple way to get insane um like pleasure and enjoyment out of the game while also having like the pendulum swing the opposite way and have heartbreak mm-hmm. um but to do it in a light enough game where it doesn't like make you feel sour about it yeah uh, i think like like you said there's something about guessing or inferring whatever you want to say what your um teammates are or teammate or teammates are trying to do and then getting it right Oh, and there's also something about when they don't get it right, and you're just like, what are you thinking? Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. if you're like us, you can sort of, we like to sort of rag on each other, and we don't take it personally when we do it, and that, you know, this game offers up those kind of moments. If you have that kind of group where you can, you know, just sort of be like, you know. Yeah, don't take it too seriously. Joke, don't, yeah. You should not be taking that seriously. So like, joke around and stuff, and but, yeah. And failure fun. is a real possibility in this game. It's not like, it's it's, yeah. it's easy to learn, and it's, you know, relatively easy to play. Or it's very easy to play, but it, it, you can fail if you don't play well. Yeah, and that leads me to a mechanic. I wanted to, might as well just go talk about the mechanic now so I, I can, uh, sure. you know, expand on what I, we were saying. I like the, uh, the Binks mechanic. Yes. Not just sure. because you have this little cute cat, you know, token that is mm-hmm. you know doesn't even really need to be as extravagant it's a wooden token they could have just done like a cardboard coin but i like that it's a wooden token but um oh get him out yeah, maybe, maybe. is he in here yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah Fable. when someone gets a card with a symbol the cat black cat you mm-hmm. can get play this Not and then the person can either decide to um you know play it themselves and then they can lay all their cards face up for mm-hmm. everyone to see and strategize off of mm-hmm. or they can give it to someone else if they want to know what the other people have their yep. other teammates Obviously, this adds to some of the strategies we were just talking about earlier. You know, you, you can actually see now what one of your teammates has and go off of that. And there are plenty of cards in that deck that you can keep this thing moving, you know? Yeah. So you could have it so that, you know, you look at your, your teammates. And if you're playing with two players, it actually, I think, sometimes maybe makes the game a little too easy because then it's like you can just kind of pass it back and forth. And you, if you have good memory, you'll kind of pretty much know... You can make it so that in any round, you pretty much know what most of the cards are that people have. Yeah, but that's, yeah, it doesn't make it like, like unlosable. Uh, yeah, exa- yeah, and that's and, that, and and that's why I like it because I, it's not a word, but yes. Uh, but yeah, uh, but I guess is what I like about it is it adds. I think the game would be maybe a little too hard without it, and also just a little too shallow. You know. Well, there's there's yeah, I mean, there's also these the the trick uh, tokens that come yeah. with the game. There's four uh, single use uh, abilities you can uh, pull out of your hat uh, when you're in a pinch, which uh, they're not they're not super uh, like powerful, but they're they are situationally helpful. Each mm-hmm. of them, uh, you know, you're probably going to use all four of them, uh, and they're highly thematic too. You know, well, not highly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, like the way that they're absolutely. Like, they're all if you've the seen movie. the movie, you know what who Billy Butcherson is, yeah. or the circle of th- 
of salt. My uh, Can I try that again, Will? Throw out a circle of salt. That's what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I agree. They're super useful. The one that we're that I think is most useful, the one where you can discard three cards and then draw new three three new ingredient mm -hmm. cards. Uh, but I like that there's sort of the given like, like if you every time you discard cards, you're closer to the end of the game and yeah. losing. So yeah. there's like ooh, I, I, I do use actually. That? I would say that I I, I like that mechanic. Uh, uh, the the idea that after every round ends, all the non special ingredients are removed from the game. The special ones get shuffled back into the deck, mm -hmm. meaning that spells are going to be coming more frequently, and time is running out. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think that, you know, it's a, it's, it's a clever little way of, of sort of introducing the progression of time into into a game like this. I like the I like that the cards uh, serve as like a countdown to the end game. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a, it's, you know, it's like a slow moving hourglass. You can see them trickling down, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Especially, you know, it makes the last round a lot more difficult because you're oh, absolutely. You can have a much more dense uh, grouping of spells. Well, yeah, you're running out of time, you're running out of cards, and you are going to be probably mm -hmm. casting a, a bunch of spells, which can uh, definitely uh, mess things up for you. Yeah. All this kind of ties back into the, the sort of incorporation of the theme, but, you know, I, I, I do like the, the, the three witches and the way that, you know, they get stunned in different ways, which can, you know, you can sort of... Uh, Playing a strategy around that even, because you know Winifred is the most uh, powerful of the three. Her spells do the most damage, so and it's also the most difficult to. She's the one that's the most, most difficult, difficult to, to stun. stun. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, yeah, and if certain spells come out early in the game, like if mm -hmm. you have two Sarah spells out, you know there, there's a lesser chance of drawing her spells later. You can intentionally try to stun Mary or Winifred yeah. instead. Though I do think this game is one that encourages you to just go with the cards often. We kind of have to. Yeah. I, 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 honestly, like uh, the. the Main criticism of this game, personally, I mean, it's that it is it, there is a, a pretty significant element of luck. You can just end up worse with a situation where you're just not getting the right uh, distribution of cards between the players, making it, it impossible really to advance pretty much for a significant amount of time. Like eventually, you're gonna get a combination of five in some way with, yeah. with the deck, but like it, it can be pretty frustrating at times when you know through no fault of your own, you're just not. Uh, mm -hmm. performing well yeah like you have like three oil boils in your hand yeah the other person has three greens in their hand like it's not just you're just not getting the right balance because of the luck of the draw yeah it happens in this game maybe it's a bit more magnified in, in lesser player counts when you're playing with uh, fewer people because you know there's going to be less cards just in play in general but yeah i agree with you that luck is uh prevalent throughout the game yeah and I mean, and a lot of the time you are just kind of guessing and hoping for, that you are making the right play for what your opponent, your your, uh, your the other players have. So yeah. there's there is there is uh, there is guessing involved, and also the spells. I mean, it's kind of the point, obviously, but the spells can definitely mess you up if they if you know if the wrong one comes out at the wrong time. You That's know, true. I think the Winifred has one that just makes you discard five cards from the ingredient deck, which is brutal. If this was a game that took three hours to play and was really weighty, yeah. then I'd care more about the luck being... Yeah. But no, in this, i almost give it a complete pass because I think it serves the game. I would say this game... And, like, who its audience is and all that. Uh, time on here is 30 minutes. I'd say that's pretty pretty accurate. Mm -hmm. um, it, is, it is a solid, probably 30 or so minutes to play this game. Yeah. Uh, so it's not super short. Um, it's not the sort of thing where if you kind of, in the end, you, you mess... You're, gonna, you're probably not going to play this, like, three times in a row. I like. I, I wouldn't want to. No. Um, so keep that in mind. So if things go poorly, that might leave kind of a, a bad taste in your mouth, but, um, yeah, it's what it is. So uh, anyway, we, uh, theme, we have to talk about it. Uh, I think they were really smart about what they did here. This isn't like Jaws where like the actual gameplay is, is, uh, it's like the movie. It's not informed by what happens on yeah. screen. Uh, they excised the three protagonists from the film, which I think was a smart decision. They focused kind of on what people liked. Yeah. The witches and Binks and like Billy and like some of like the, like the spells and stuff that the witches are known for. Mm -hmm. That's what they incorporated. And then the gameplay is kind of, you know, just a, a something. Not specific to Hocus Pocus. It's I mean, like there's they they brew potion, but yeah. that's kind of it's not like an adventure game where you're trying to like save the day it's, on a map or something like that. Obviously, it's kind of just like a good idea for a cooperative card game. Yeah, they threw Hocus Pocus on, and it. this is a theme that works well. Yes, with the idea. Yeah, uh, I think obviously as far as the production. 
quality goes. It's it's kind of what you'd expect from Ravensburger. It's not a big product, like we said, but like everything here is pretty nice quality. Um, uh, you've already complimented Binks. I think the cards are all very very glossy. Yeah, uh, they're a little difficult to shuffle almost, but they're 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 a nice quality. Everything you know, nice cardboard. These are all. It's a good rule book too. I think it, they nailed it. That's pretty good. Shall we score it? Yes. Why not? All right. Um, I would recommend. I I still. I think I would recommend this mainly to people who like the film, fans of the film. I think they're the people who can get the most out of this. Uh, you know, if you're not, if you're, if you're, again, if you're not familiar, you might still enjoy the game, but it's not going to be the sort of thing you're going to probably want to bring off the shelf all that often. I, this is this. I think it's maybe like a seasonal game. I could see this coming out around like this time of year, Halloween, you know, maybe do a fe double feature. You play the game, you watch the movie, vice yeah. versa. Maybe play this and then play Horrified even, something like that, uh, like a spooky season sort of thing. Um, I think that's kind of be the, the main appeal for this game. But I do think it's pretty fun for what it is. Um, and uh, I'm going to give it three and a half stars out of five. Yeah, good point, Steve. Yeah, I don't no. have much to add. I like the theme, even though I'm not like I'm not a huge fan of the movie, but I watched it enough as a kid that you know. I mean, not everyone's like, yeah. It's I, like, oh, I remember that. I'm not a huge know? fan of the movie. I, yeah. I like it. It's it's okay. <laughs> yeah, no, but I'm saying that like I even though I'm not a huge fan of the movie, I was like, oh, I remember Billy Butcher saying, oh, I remember Banks. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed the theme. I enjoyed the simple gameplay. I like games like this. Mm -hmm. These sort of simple cooperative card games where you have to infer what your you know teammates are doing, what they're up to. That's always fun. Um. You know, it does have that inherent issue where you can't really discuss strategy. So there's, uh, I guess you could say, a lack of conversation sometimes when you play, unless you make it, you know. You can talk about stuff outside the game. Well, yeah, of course. But otherwise, you're kind of playing this game in quiet. We didn't really mention that before, but that, you know, uh, doesn't always work for me. But it, it's still, this is a fun game to play. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to give it, you know, I'm going to give this game a B-. minus. Okay. That's I was on the, you know, because it's You like, really labored over that. I, I, That's kind of what I was expecting anyway, so okay. Yeah, because it's like, I, you know, I like it, but I, I it's agree It's not essential. It. Yeah, it's yeah. not an essential. Like, it's it's a filler game. Yeah, sure. Of course. Um, Within the realms of filler games and other games that we played of the like, I'd give it a B-. That's pretty good. Thank you for watching this review of Hocus Pocus the Game. If you enjoyed our little, uh, little uh, discussion here, give us a thumbs up. We always appreciate that. You can leave any thoughts you have down below uh, in the comments. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet for more videos every week. Not, well, yeah, not every week. Uh, gameplays and reviews. And social media is down below as well in the description, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you want to check those out, follow up on those. Um, or you can just hit the notification bell here on YouTube. And that will let you know as soon as our videos release, whenever that is. Next week, we're playing a game that was supposed to come out before this. It's true. Uh, that should be, uh, that could be, probably be a, a bigger, longer one if I had to guess. I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah, I think so. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a board game. Uh, but until then, thank you for watching, everybody. Bye. See you for the next one. Happy Halloween. Yes, happy Halloween, indeed.